Hi guys, good afternoon. Welcome back again to Procurement Dialogues. I'm your host, Lerato. Today's episode is quite an interesting one because we're going to be chatting to Media Simodegua. He is the stakeholder engagement at VUCA uh, Group, right? Can I say that? Yes, the energy, uh, the power and the energy portfolio. I love it. So today's topic, it's centered around, is procurement the answer to energy crisis in Africa? Can we say Africa? Um, in South Africa, perhaps, okay, then you can narrow it down. Again? Yeah, okay. also. All right. <laughs> Welcome, Mediasi. Thank you, Lerato. It's good to be with you, and uh, it's a pleasure to always chat to you about of this. Of course. Thing. Maybe we should tell our viewers how we met. Um, yo, it has been a while. Eh? I think uh, I could put it at about seven to eight years when I started at uh, my previous company and mm -hmm. we were discussing issues around procurement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was a good um, a journey. You have spoken at a couple of my conferences before. Love, is it? Yeah. Key, I've spoken at a couple of your conferences. Yeah, yeah. And today the roles are soft. The roles are soft. I yeah. love this for us. Also. Media, see, let's just kickstart our conversation. Energy crisis is obviously still here in South Africa. Almost every day people are frustrated. There isn't enough, I would say, solutions or alternatives, more so affordable. Um, and taking this back to corporate responsibility and procurement, what would you say is the answer related to what we have, what we're seeing now? Yeah. Now, Lerato, that's a very key question mm. because everyone right now is concerned about the availability of power. Mm. And, and the challenge itself is there's no single straight silver bullet answer to this. Yeah. Um, because there are multi-layer problems. Uh, if you look at one area, it could be governance issues. Mm. On another, it could be maintenance issues. Mm. On another, you could even pinpoint something to do with sabotage of uh, key infrastructure. So there is no uh, silver bullet to this. But there are some elements that we can start to plug in yeah. and, and, and start to say to ourselves, I think if we start doing things this way, there could be a solution. And from my, where I'm standing, I think procurement plays a very important role in the actual solution to the energy crisis. Hmm. You, know? you know what? I want us to maybe just debunk that a bit, yeah. right? Procurement plays a role in solving the problems related to energy you know, issues. In what practical sense do you think yeah. professionals can, you know, do yeah. or look into that can be part of a solution towards these issues? Yeah. So if, if you look at it this way, what is procurement? You mm. know, like um, at the core of procurement is uh, demand and supply. Yeah. So with the energy crisis, what we have is high levels of demand but uh, supply is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in South Africa, and broadly speaking, all over Africa, you still find areas that are technically unelectrifiable. And so even if the capacity was there mm -hmm. to, to, to bring power to people, uh, informal sectors make it difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, those areas that are technically unelectrifiable just make it very difficult. And if you go back to um, uh, you know, the, the, the United Nations goals, uh, sustainable goals, SDGs, there is this drive to create 100% access by 2030. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about access, we, we, we're saying people connected to the grid or at least have access to electricity by uh, 2030. Hmm. We are nowhere near that. And this is 2024, six years to go. So the real challenge is there is so much demand for power, mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. and the supply is not guaranteed. So it becomes a procurement issue. Mm -hmm. It becomes an issue of saying, how do you bring energy to people? And how do we make sure that there is access um, uh, of energy to everybody? So these are some of the challenges, and this is why this question you ask, what role can procurement play? Mm. And is procurement really the answer? Mm -hmm. uh, somewhat it is, because there is demand and there must be supply, and the demand at the moment is quite high than what the country can give, or Africa in general can supply to people. 
Thank you for that answer. I'm just wondering that procurement usually relies heavily on business requirements, right? Um, and business scoping the need and obviously having budget to go and source and bring about this back into the communities, right? So someone who is a procurement professional sitting there might say, how is this my problem? Excuse me, I'm just here to facilitate. What would you say to that type of a person? Yeah, so if you really think about energy, it's becoming a fundamental aspect of our lives. Yeah. In fact, it's a right. Electricity mm -hmm. is a right. So I do not think the argument should be about, uh, you know, I'm just a facilitator, or it's really about providing service to people. Mm. And that's key because hospitals, there are people on life, supporting uh, mm. machines. Mm. Uh, there is security infrastructure that is dependent on power and energy. There is business, there are schools, they, the list just goes on and on and yeah. on. So energy is now becoming a key um, uh, aspect of our everyday lives. You mm -hmm. know, uh, We joke about this, but think about what you know, we feel restricted if we don't even have Wi-Fi, right? It's a problem True. for so yeah. many people. Now, True. Uh, think about energy, electricity, and the threat that can be available if there is just a shortage of demand. And we're not even talking economic growth, the impact therefore of mm -hmm. attractiveness uh, of uh, investors looking at a certain country mm -hmm. uh, and judging its investment metrics based on the availability of power and energy. So the conversation around energy is no longer about just improving the quality of life for people, it's about economic growth. It's about investment. Mm. It's really about jobs. Mm. It's about jobs. Right? It's about creating opportunities for people right now. So you and I agree that. So if we had to bring a CPO here mm -hmm. and we sit down and we say, Mr. CPO, what are you doing in your organization um, related to this issue? What are some of the key KPIs can they drive that will be almost like a bridge and a gap towards this issue in your mind? Look, just like any other commodity out there, uh, the key is having visibility. Yeah. Uh, you're a program person, so you would know that uh, one of your key performance areas is mm -hmm. about cost savings. Mm. So the first thing is to understand how much organizations are spending on energy. Mm just as a category like yeah. that. And then you look at the options or the impact rather, let mm. me start by the impact of not having power. Mm. So you, you, you have to do that uh, visibility uh, spectrum and say to yourself, if I have energy, how much am I using uh, mm -hmm. on energy? If I do not have energy, what is the impact? Mm -hmm. Whether on the bottom line, which is uh, the, the company's ability to make money, or on my response, if you are in a security field, for example, you can't afford not to yes. have visibility of your cams or whatever the case might be. So visibility is important. So once you can understand that this is how much we use on energy, but this is the impact if we don't have it, you take it a, little, a step further and say now, where are cost savings opportunities here? Mm. And these are conversations every CPO must, must be having right now. Part of the fourth industrial revolution speaks to innovation, yeah. right? And we're probably moving and shifting away from that. There's AI now that's coming in, etc., which is what we probably appreciate more, yeah. right? Now, you've mentioned um, alternatives like your generator, solar yeah. panels, UPS, and the likes. Yeah. Do you think that procurement professionals play a pivotal role in inspiring some innovative ideas of what the business should look at related to alternative power supply and energy and stuff? Very good question. So I have long believed that procurement um, is not just about buying because everybody can buy. Mm. You know, I can send my kid to the shops and they can buy, they can bring bread. Procurement's role um, is going to be very strategic going into the future. It has to involve research. Mm. It has to ref involve um, um, innovation. Um, procurement should be a strategic business advisor, frankly speaking. Mm -hmm. So you have the research and you can present numbers. Mm -hmm. 
um, um, and and without numbers, you, you you can't really benchmark. So you need to do research, you mm. present numbers, and say, look, based on where we are, this is how much we are losing in our operations due to load shedding, for example. Mm -hmm. So what is the next big thing? Uh, we need to bring innovation. This this there's a lot of innovation that has gone into battery energy storage for example yes, yes. there's a lot of research that has gone into solar panels i mean i was in ghana the other time and they've got these solar panels that uh, generate from a dual side so you, you know they've put this whole solar uh, system on top of water and there's a reason for that because sun heats on top of the solar but it also reflects back uh, so that's innovation. So these solar panels that are not so just... Smart. It's yeah. smart, yeah. So, so, so we're uh, looking at this infrastructure and I said to myself, you know, this is actually cool. And how many lakes and dams do we have in Africa? Mm. Uh, oceans, mm. you know, um, uh, and, and we could do something like that. It's 100% it's clean. Mm. It doesn't impact the environment. Um, um, uh, and, and it still gives you the power. Mm. So, so, so I really think that procurement by investing time in re and, and resources in research and development mm -hmm. can really come up with some cool ideas that they can present and say, this is the next big thing and this is how we can de-risk and make sure that we have mm. our operations are not uh, um, are interrupted. Yeah, that's amazing. So what I hear you say in simple terms is procurement teams must work with the innovation team and R&D to come up with the solutions because of course you having to source and deliver these things and in a cost efficient manner must yeah. be done by the role of procurement. But you must understand further than yeah. just the sourcing part is you being involved in the innovation part of it. That's the key. And, and also the speed, Lerato. Um, um, we have been talking and sitting with load shedding now mm -hmm. for a very long time. Yeah. And you know, in my scope of work, we 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 discussing um, with municipalities at the moment and saying to municipalities, what innovative ways can you come up with to deal with load shedding? Mm -hmm. So we, we we run what we call the municipal forum, mm -hmm. and 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 it's open to all municipalities. It's it's not a commercial product at all. But it's, it's, it's really about encouraging municipalities to deal with, uh, to come up with solutions in dealing with the energy crisis. Yeah. And some of the innovation sitting with these municipalities and the heads of generation technical teams, it's, it's amazing. You know, basic things like energy efficiency programs, smart metering, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. is, is, is going to be key. Mm. Because again, how do you know, how does a municipality know that Lerato uses this much power every month. Mm -hmm. um, and how can they monitor that virtually? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be key going into the future because if I have a way of saying you are using too much, so we're going to switch off, switch off your geyser, and we can do that remotely, mm -hmm. we can significantly reduce demand. Mm -hmm. And when you reduce demand, we can lower the stages of load shedding. So innovation and discussion forums are going mm -hmm. to be key, um, uh, putting money into research and development and learning platforms, mm -hmm. I think is going to be key in dealing with the energy crisis. Mm, I love that. Yeah. So since we have established you and I that procurement is the answer, or rather a role player in resolving our issues of you know, um, electricity, I then want to challenge you a bit, right? There is excessive regulation that governs the procurement of services in South Africa. We have our regulator, we have the PFMA, and professionals are looking into that as a blueprint on how they source. Yeah. So do you think then having that at the backbone of you know, guiding procurement and policies, you know, that's heavily on governance, yeah. can that be a limiting factor to in fact implement those type of innovations? Yeah. And how then, if it is a limiting factor, can we look at just navigating around that? Yeah. So I've got a somewhat controversial view to this. Yeah. There is policy, mm -hmm. and we all need policy. Mm -hmm. But there is uh, policy and being policed. <laughs> Two different things, right? Yeah. So if you look at policy as being policed, then you are going nowhere very slowly. Mm. We need regulation, mm -hmm. and for good reason, because we must operate in a certain parameter. Yeah. Energy procurement 
should be regulated. Mm. No, you, you can't just come up and put a generator that affects the whole area without some form of um, uh, uh, regulation. Yeah, you, so yeah. we do need regulation. Yeah. It's uh, like driving. We need um, uh, yeah, guidelines, guidelines on mm. how to do this safely mm -hmm. and in a way that uh, saves life. So the narrative of looking at regulation as a barrier, for me, I find it very difficult to 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 quite understand. Those are some of the issues professionals have, though. Yeah, they do. They as do. A challenge. So, so the, the, the I would put it this way: How do we navigate mm -hmm. regulation? Mm -hmm. You know, if you set out here to say I'm going to Cape Town, you know that there will be speed limits, there will be treacherous roads and caves mm -hmm. and. But that doesn't stop you from get, going to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. you, you, you need to navigate in a safe way and understand that this is what I have to do. And one of the discussions we pick up is that uh, regulation is not talking to one another. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and in some cases, that's true. But it's mostly because the energy crisis has been with us just for the, probably the last uh, yeah. decade Four, three, or so three, we're yeah. still learning uh, this whole thing this whole thing yeah and so i think we need time um but that's time we don't have as mm -hmm. well so that's why i was mentioning in the beginning that we need speed whatever we do has to be done with speed and understand that um the energy crisis may be here for a very long time if we don't act now so mm -hmm. would you then agree with me but my opinion is that since the regulator plays a huge role in how procurement is governed, they also need to come on board equally as procurement needs to be in the innovation conversation we had earlier. To say, how can we then look at this part of our country's problem in how we procure and how quickly we turn around or to enable the very same innovation ideas that we had Unlike any typical recrutation process that has threshold of so yeah. much 80-20, there might just be a need for, you know, um, DTI to yeah. look at some of these things and say, okay, since we have this problem, let's work together and see how we can enable your process to be more efficient to resolving yeah. our procurement system in general related to yeah. energy. Yeah, so that's a very good, uh, good point of view. And that's why we have NESA. NESA yes. is our regulator, National Energy mm. uh, Regulator of South Africa. And, 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 and they've done well. Uh, I mean, you, you, you know that there was a time where we were in a state of disaster to deal mm. specifically with the energy crisis. Mm. So what the state of disaster allowed is for different organizations, municipalities, government departments to move with speed. Mm. So some of the regulations during that period were relaxed so that whether you're a municipality mm. or government uh, a department or a national treasury, whatever the case may be, you can then move with speed and 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 and, and um, uh, in in the procurement of energy itself. Let's talk about contract management, supply relationship management. Do you think that is still now the role of procurement to ensure that now that we have these solutions, are we managing them enough? To see the performance, that speaks to the maintenance of, you know, all these sites that are just not been performing yeah. and yeah. Yeah. So that's also a very key element to this. Mm. Because if you are focused on just procuring mm. uh, renewable solutions, like yes. solar pond panels, for example, mm -hmm. renewables, and we're not thinking about the disposal aspect of it, mm. we're going to sit with the... Mm -hmm. environmental disaster in 20 years yes because how are we going to dispose all these solar panels um, um you know uh, battery energy storage is one thing but mm -hmm. again this is battery how are you going to dispose this in 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 a safe way so part of the contract management i think mm -hmm. and in the supply relationship issues should be done in such a way that people are thinking these things through they look at what they want to solve, they look at the duration of the contract, they look at the risks associated with it, but they also consider the disposal aspect of it, the environmental aspect of it. Because we may solve this disaster, but say, <laughs> sit with another disaster 20 years down the line, because we didn't really think about the disposal aspect mm. of it. We, we, the, the, the industry, the power and energy sector needs people to come together. Mm. And it's just not the technical people, 
Mm -hmm. uh, people that you know you know I, I listen to a lot of conversations and people feel like we, we, we're not maintaining enough that's just part of the problem mm -hmm. we, we need to discuss this in a holistic way mm -hmm. and that's why forums like Enlit Africa for example the the event that mm -hmm. I am championing these days have got all end-to-end -end conversations around the energy transition. Mm -hmm. What are we missing? Who has done it before? And what are the success stories? What have been the lessons learned? Everything mm. is really uh, around lessons learned. Mm. Uh, we have got the, the, the case study in Europe. I mean, they were going green mm. uh, and, and, and fantastic progress until the Russia-Ukraine crisis started mm. and realized, you know what, we're not going to get mm. gas from Russia. Mm -hmm. So let's start now to reopen those coal-fired power stations. Yeah. So they didn't anticipate a world where Russia could say, I'm no longer giving you my gas, mm -hmm. you know. So, so all these things must be thought through in such a way that it's, it's, it's sustainable, but people are also thinking of the environment and everything else, the economy, and so forth. But okay. I do believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I work with um, a very close proximity with ESCOM. Mm. Um, you know, um, uh, the problems are going to be there. Mm. But, but, you know, if you, if you sit with these guys and just try to understand the amount of work that is being done yeah. at the moment, I really believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> That's what you want to see. And yeah. Lydia, it's part of, um, I would say, the goals of what we're trying to achieve in this podcast, since yeah. we're inspiring procurement conversation. Yeah. It is to really uh, inspire change and drive mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. in the community, in the professionals, you know, um, ultimately stakeholders, you yeah. know, and just have a different voice. And your voice is one of those that we needed today to, you know, hear a different perspective on how can we drive solutions related to these type of issues mm -hmm. and maybe poke some uh, minds and brains yeah. out there. Maybe we can look at things in this way yeah. or that way. And thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I, I must add this though, um, Alerato, uh, this is such a good initiative. Mm. We need to get the word out. Solutions cannot sit in one corner. Yeah. We need different players. Yeah. At the heart of the energy crisis and the energy transition mm. moving away, there is investment. Mm. So the procurement of funds itself, for example, the, mm. the, you know, we don't usually look at it that way. But when you are getting money from World Bank or from all these DFIs, mm -hmm. it's procurement. They need to understand how you're going to manage this, how you're going to deliver this, mm. how you're going to governance is going to be very important yeah you know how these funds are managed and appropriated per project mm -hmm. and uh, you know with clear benchmarks i think uh, one of the guys i was talking to said to me i don't mind paying mm. as long as i know what i'm paying for absolutely you know yeah. so so transparency in the system is key um and, and one thing that we have also managed to do at uh, the Enlit Africa is to bring CEOs across Africa mm. to discuss some of the solutions. I mean, there's a real possibility that we could have a grid collapse, total grid collapse. I mean, mm. it has happened in Botswana, it has happened in mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria, it has happened in Kenya. Now, that's a worst case scenario, yeah. and we don't want to be there. And an economy as big as South Africa, that could take us about two weeks to restart the grid. Mm. That's two weeks we don't have. Crazy. So I think let's get people in the right places yeah. to talk, to converse, and to have this conversation. Leadership is key. Mm. With the right will, with the right stakeholders, mm -hmm. I think we will get somewhere. But it has to start from a governance perspective, get the right people in the room, understand the mechanisms mm -hmm. around getting finance. Because it's easy to just say, I need finance, you know, fund yeah, us. Yeah. But are you going to use it wisely? Sure. So those are some of the issues I think are key thank to you. address this whole situation. Sure. No, thank you for sharing. Yeah. So media team, we're going to move into some very light-hearted conversation. Our part of the segment. Um, one of the things we pride ourselves in here is that we celebrate excellence. I don't think procurement professionals, stakeholders, who support the profession are celebrated enough. And we do that just through speaking about it and saying, wow, thank you. Someone out there is learning, it's getting inspiration. Mm -hmm. So in your journey of becoming, you know, the content creator, author, and all the other fancy roles you've had, stakeholder engagement, manager, how 
did you get to where you are just in a you know quick 30 seconds um and then just say to someone out there what are the key things they need to look at in terms of growing their career yeah yeah mm. you know um that's a very fascinating question actually but I, I i believe in collaboration yeah i think you can never come up with solutions alone yeah collaboration is key mm. even this energy crisis we're talking about it will require a lot of collaboration and mm. that's has been one of my key area mm. I, I i i think building connections and network that's one thing you can't buy yeah. You know, you, you really need to connect with people, have conversations that are meaningful. And from there, you, you can achieve something. Mm. You know, you just don't know when you are going to use a contact, whether it's three months down the line or a month or a year down the line, whatever the case, uh, building a sustainable network is very important. So that for you is one of the key things For me, you... I think that's, that's, that's a key element. And, and we're encouraging this. Um, uh, our event, uh, one of the key areas is connect. Mm. You really need to connect with the industry very well. We're encouraging this with CEOs. We're building this uh, CEO forum, for example, where CEOs are coming to connect with their peer, to come up with solutions. Because what Rwanda has faced is different from what Malawi has faced and different from yeah. what Zimbabwe yeah. is facing. So when you bring these people and they connect, uh, amazing things can happen. So can I say it's your strength? I'll leave that to you <laughs> <laughs> to judge. So yeah. which brings me now to what yeah. we call in this platform uh, a procurement folly challenge. So this is just you answering my questions in 30 seconds. Literally 30 seconds, I'm going to time you. <laughs> okay. Let's... Just to get to know media a little bit. Okay, let's okay. go for it. First one, what was your first embarrassing moment when you were in your work environment? I walked into a meeting without a diary. Okay. I walked into a meeting and I didn't have um, anywhere to write notes. Mm -hmm. That was very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot can be said in a meeting and you forget. And you forget. True. That was very embarrassing for me. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Second one. Since you've had the role content creator, you've written quite a lot of material. Which one would you say was your best highlight? So what we do uh, is, you know, we, we travel a lot across Africa and then just try to get some of these uh, success stories. Mm -hmm. But I think my, my biggest highlight was in Ghana. Okay. They built this power station, mm -hmm. uh, generation. It's, 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 it's a hybrid mm -hmm. uh, solar plant and um, uh, uh, hydro. But when they started this building, it's called the uh, BUI in, in Ghana, the BUI Generation uh, Power Authority. So when they started building, they identified this place and said, you know what, we need, this is where the infrastructure has to be. Mm. There were people that had lived there for many years. They had um, relatives that had died, so they, were, they had graves. Mm they had a symmetry a whole symmetry mm. but now you're saying we want to build a dam sure. hydro power plant here yes. and we need to relocate you yes so people are leaving their ancestors lying there it was a very emotional story it is but you know the authorities what they did there was quite amazing they spoke to the community and said this is what we want to do mm. Are you, do you see the value in this power plant? Everybody saw the value, but they had an attachment with this piece of land because their relatives mm. were buried there. Mm. So the government said, if you allow us, we're going to take you all, uh, change the quality of the houses that you are living in. You are living in mud houses. Mm -hmm. We're going to build for you these new houses with... Uh, a bathroom with mm. you know mm. you know proper infrastructure that's benefit number one benefit number two we're gonna employ you as part of this project mm. and benefit number three we're gonna have an ambulance we're gonna have a hospital for you we're gonna have and they followed through on those commitments mm. you know when I look at that it was so touching for me that somebody cared enough 
yeah. everybody in the end was a winner. Hmm. So, so, so that story just remained with me that with dialogue, everything can be achieved. Mm. You know, I mean, there's nothing as, 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 yeah, as emotional as moving someone from their great grandfather's uh, 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 final resting place. Mm. But with dialogue, it was achieved. Yeah. And they actually exhumed these bodies, reburied them somewhere else. The quality of life has improved. I mean, uh, isn't that a touching story? It when is you quite think about it. So, what what was your role in there? Um, well, we were just uh, touring this infrastructure and then understanding mm. what innovation behind has been. It. Yeah, behind it, oh, what the story gotcha. was. Uh, but but I just thought that it was such a beautiful a story. Beautiful one, yeah. If replicated across yeah. Africa, we can achieve a lot. Because it's not just a, a situation of saying, this is what we're going to do, we're going to move you. Yeah. We have to be sensitive to people's you know, uh, like feelings yeah. and connect with them, better their lives, mm. and then... Uh, we can achieve more, I think, oh, that way. <laughs> well done to Ghana, Ghana. Right? Yeah, that was, that was, well done. it's a fascinating story. Yeah. yeah. All right. My last question. Imposter syndrome gets to the most of us. And I think most of us don't talk about that one. People think, ah, media, you can't be serious. What has been the one issue probably that comes out a lot? That is an imposter syndrome to you. And how do you come overcome that? Or you've dealt with it. Maybe it used to be. <laughs> Can I can I skip this? No, you can't. <laughs> you cannot. Yeah. No, even the crew is gonna say no, no. Eh? The crew. But you definitely had something, you know. Um, should I tell you my imposter syndrome? Yeah, please. Maybe you'll feel free. Yeah, so go with it. One of the imposter syndromes I've had was I don't think I speak English well, and when I listen to some people who went to private school, I just feel like. You know, when they rhyme and the twang and so I'm always conscious when I'm speaking, I'm speaking, but I'm listening to myself. And sometimes it becomes like a hurdle and people that listen to me are like, ah, you're crazy. So those are some of the things that I have to deal with. And until I figured out, no, man, just speak. Yeah. OK, it's not a mother tongue just speak. So that's one thing that I have to deal with. OK, if it helps, you speak English very well. Thank you. So um, I, I don't think that was such a big issue. Yeah. But look, Lerato, we are a diverse world mm. we we come from different backgrounds mm. and and i think one of the things that just sit uh, uh, you know subconsciously in me when you meet people especially from different backgrounds mm. that feeling of being accepted you oh, know yeah. um, um, is 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 very can can hinder progress mm. in a, a lot of people mm. i mean i interact with ceos i interact with high end organization and and sometimes you feel like ooh Am I even qualified to talk to these gentlemen? But when you see them giving you time, that opportunity, welcoming, yeah. I, I think I think for me that's also quite a very good thing. Mm -hmm. um, um, but but overall, I think I believe in in humanity. I think people generally love each other and mm -hmm. care for one another, and I think it's going to be um, a part of the solution as well uh, to consider solutions, whether they are coming from. China or whether they're coming from Russia or United States or Zimbabwe, Zambia or whatever. whatever yeah. As long as this is a solution that works, we must embrace it. Yeah. You know, we don't um, operate in silos. Sure. We, 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 we are one Africa and we, when we learn from one another like that, I think yeah. we can achieve far greater things. Thank you. Your answers were really amazing. Thank you very much. I mean, of course, I always remember the Ghana story. Yeah. And yeah, it's crazy that what you have to deal with in terms of imposter syndrome. It's when you hear it, someone says like, yeah. "Ah, how can you think about that?" You yeah. know. Yeah. But it's quite validating when you actually think that. It you know, is. And it is. Just in your head. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Awesome. So we just get into the closing. I want to ask you one more question. Uh, mentorship. Do you believe in mentorship? Have you been mentored before? Would I you do. encourage it? I do. You know. One of my, uh, my, my, my boss, and I think I can mention her, right? Uh, her name is Claire. She is a mentor in the true sense of it. Yeah. When I started, I mean, she has like 20 years experience in this power and energy sector, mm. uh, different roles. But when I started, the first thing she told me is, I don't expect you to know everything. Yeah. 
but I'm here for you. That's lovely. You know, um, I didn't expect that, but over the years, you know what, even up until now, I, I do have voice notes from her reassuring mm. media, so you're on the right track with mm. this. This is really cool mm. stuff that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly believe that mentorship is important. Just to give people a sense of self-pride, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. even if they make a mistake, we can address these things as we go. But but mentorship, to, to understand that, um, um, you know, these things um, happen, I think for me is very, very important. Mm -hmm. The second aspect uh, of mentorship is understanding that people have a life outside of work. You know, and I'm just talking broadly speaking. I mean, um, uh, COVID has taught us this, that there are other things that are more important than work, family and so forth. And, and that's the one thing also I appreciate in my current environment because so many times we have these one hour catch up meetings and 90% of the time we're talking about mentorship. What do you want me to help you with? How can I assist you? Are you okay with this? Show me how your week is looking. I want to see if you're doing too much. Mm. It means a lot, mm. you know, uh, for me. But for, for, for my boss to ask me each time how my kids are doing, I think that's really good. Mm. Um, I feel much better. And, you know, it's vice versa. She shares stuff with me as well. You know, mm. media say I didn't have a good day today. That's nice. And, and, and we always bounce these ideas. That's nice. So we, we, we go beyond, uh, you know, just just being work colleagues. Yeah. And, 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 and when that happens, um, I think magic happens as well. Mm. You, you start to do, you feel appreciated, valued, and, 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 and you feel like you can do more, you know, in True. your current True. role. Okay. But the mere fact that it's a highly technical industry that I am in and someone is willing to hold my hand That's and remarkable. yeah, coach me along the way, I think that works very well for yeah. me. Thank you so much, Midisa, for sharing that. I also believe in mentorship. I think it helps you navigate your career path properly yeah. and complex situations. I don't think all of us appreciate it, but I think it's quite important, whether formal or informal, yeah. to whatever extent. So um, thank you for also agreeing that it's a necessity, you know, that we all need. So just in closing, since you spoke a lot about procurement playing a pivotal role in implementation, driving, you know, um, each solutions related to energy, what are just your last thoughts on this topic, just in, in closing? I do think that procurement is a key component to the energy um, solution yeah. uh, to the energy crisis. I think we have to just um, look at our policies mm -hmm. and try to see if they are fit for purpose. You know, um, um, I know a lot of work is being done to navigate some of these regulations, um, but I really do think that uh, uh, procurement is a key element because there is demand and there must be supply. Mm -hmm. And regulation is going to be key. Mm. Uh, to this. And regulation should not just be looking at one side, it should also look, it should be investor centric as well. And it has to look at what works for everybody in the long run. Then number three, when it comes to the energy transition, yeah. I do think that as the South African uh, Renewable Energy Master Plan says, there must be an industry behind it. Yeah. People should never feel the trans, uh, uh, fear the transition. Mm -hmm. They must ride on it, mm -hmm. but there must be an industry. So after all has been said and done, jobs should have been created. We should be breathing cleaner air, and okay. we should have uh, created a stronger economy. And I think it's achievable when you do those kind of things. Wow. That is absolutely powerful. Yeah. Thank you so much. One of my key takeaways from this conversation is the power of connecting South Africa and Africa, mm -hmm. making it a procurement issue, not just sitting back and thinking yeah. it's a business problem. Yes. And when anything else, looking at what are the initiatives you can look at from a cost-saving perspective, because mm -hmm. that's what drives the value that procurement yeah. provides, right? Awesome. Um, and I like the fact that you also mentioned the impact to the economy yeah. and to the actual, you know, the jobs that must be created, the people. And I think that's very good, you know, from the bigger scheme of things, yeah. you know. And collaboration. I believe collaboration. in collaboration. Yeah. Thank you so much. We met through a collaborative network. Yes. And I think even more people are going to be, 
exposed to that. Um, so yeah, it's great. Thank you so much for coming to our platform. Awesome. Before Thank we you. go, I do yeah. have a gift for you. You do know that I wrote a procurement planner. Okay, that's yeah. nice. So this Thank is my everyday much. procurement. This year you can plan all your daily activities, but there's something unique about this. You yeah. need to open it to see it. All right, I will. Should I open yes. it now? <laughs> what is the first thing you're reading? Well, maybe other pages. Um, to inspire change. Oh. And uh, yeah, if you can just browse through, you'll see a little bit of my nuggets that I think uh, procurement mm, professionals can budgets. be into. Yeah. Goal setting. Exactly. It's amazing. Thank yeah. you very much. I really appreciate how make use of this. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's conversation. We were talking to Media Mudekwa on is procurement the answer to energy crisis? And I do hope that you guys enjoyed the conversation. Please continue to like, share, and comment this podcast and share with all your social media networks, and we really appreciate it. And that's it from us. Cheers and have a good day.